Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about default configuration on databases like MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database type. And because of that, it allows remote access into those services running on any kind of operating system, as long as you have MongoDB running by default. And we're going to look into the configuration file of it and see what is the reason that allow remote access directly into those services and what you can do to protect yourself. And as a slightly more advanced discussion later on technically, we're also going to share about how you can enable authentication. And yet it opens up another problem, which is on dominant accounts. And dominant accounts, default passwords, default admin accounts. And in a moment of seconds, you can actually very quickly use different kind of attack tools and gain credentials information and again be able to get information directly into the database. So with that in mind, let's get started on today's tutorial. So over here on the website, we have more than 26,000 vulnerable MongoDB databases whacked by ransomware. And there are a lot of different kind of security shortcomings because many of these Mongol databases can be booted up really, really quickly from any of the cloud providers. And today we're going to showcase how you can actually be able to hack into some of these Mongol databases because of default configuration, because of dominant accounts, and so on. And many of it over here, you can see some of the exposure. And this was a news from 2017. And that was two years ago. So here, what we have running, again, I have Oracle Virtual Box Manager running. So on the left side of the screen, I have Kali Linux, and on the right side of the screen, I have Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is used to actually run our MongoDB. So once you have the MongoDB status, what you can do is go ahead and type service MongoD followed by status. And here you can see that we have the MongoDB running. So it's been active for a while and we recognize that it is already running. So over here, what you can do is you can actually go into other service configuration controls or features that allow you to find out further about this Mongo database. So again, you can use system, system CTL status followed by MongoD. And once you see that, you can also see what are some of the potential information that could be running. So enter null. Again, we see that there is a mongodb.service that is already running. So we got the same information as we saw earlier. And of course, we have a bind IP of 0.0.0. .0. So again, that can be different other bind IP if you're using 127.0.0.1, then chances are you will not be able to connect remotely. So once we have that running, we can also take a look at uh, PG Grab. So what you can see here, you can enter Mongo and we can see the process information or the process ID as 25261. And you can also use other way like using PS to list out all the processes and then doing a grab of Mongo as well. So here you can see you have a process running of 25261. So it's pretty straightforward. And what we can do is once we go into Kali Linux, you can actually launch the terminal. Uh, so over here, I already have a NoSQL map running, but I will showcase a little more later on about how you can actually use NoSQL map. So we're going to zoom in so it's easier for you to see and to understand what's going to go through in today's tutorial. So what you can do is enter mmap followed by dash p, which specifies the port number. And from what you know is that Mongo databases usually run on 27017 as the default port number. And of course, if you go back here, you enter ifconfig, you can see the IP address of 192.168.1.20. And you can go ahead and enter 192.168.1.20. So this is the target IP address that we'll be going after. So with that in mind, what we can do is we're able to go ahead and do a scan, a very quick scan on the port number 27017. So once you scan it using TCP, and then map, you can actually see that we have a open port. So once we have the open port, we also have the MAC address inf information. And what you can do is you can actually use a script that is available on nmap. So when you enter nmap-p207017 followed by the IP address of 192.168.1.20, you can actually put double dash followed by script and you have mongodb-brute. So this actually use a brute force method to scan the Mongol service and see whether you're able to gain access into the database. So when you go ahead and hit enter, you can actually see that no authentication is needed. And what does that mean is that 
out of the box when you launch MongoDB for the first time, it actually allows you to require no form of authentication to gain access remotely. So that is really dangerous. And if you think about the news that we saw earlier on a 26,000 vulnerable MongoDB service, again, it could be because of default configuration, misconfiguration, as well as dormant accounts. So moving forward, what we're going to do is I can enter ls-l. So what I have done is I have actually downloaded a NoSQL map. So again, if you have seen some of the previous tutorials that you will learn from, you will recognize that what we have is a SQL map. And in this case, we have a NoSQL map that is specifically targeted against NoSQL databases like Mongo, Mario, and, and so on. So what we're going to do is once you go into NoSQL map, what we can do is we can go ahead and launch NoSQL map. So you can do Python followed by NoSQL map.py. And once you launch NoSQL map, it's very straightforward. It's a very easy to use interface. So here, everything is command line interface and we're gonna go into one, which is set the options. So we're gonna set the target host. So once you hit enter, the target IP address is 192.168.1.20. And once you set that, we also wanna set the local MongoDB and shell IP, which is number seven. So we're going to go ahead and enter 192.168.1.20. And once you have that set forth, you can actually go back into the main menu. So once you're back into the main menu, you can actually do number two, which is a NoSQL DB SS attacks. So here, or, or you can go for scan for anonymous MongoDB access as well. So we're going to go straight into number two. And what you see here is checking to see if credentials are needed. And we recognize that the MongoDB is successfully accessed with no credentials because MongoDB by default, as I mentioned earlier, do not require authentication. No credentials are needed. So with that in mind, you can actually enter one. You can get your server information. We can see this is a MongoDB version of 2.6.1. It's running a 64-bit operating system or a 64-bit application. And then we can do number two, which is to enumerate the databases, collections of users. So over here, as you scroll up, you can see there's a three list of databases. You have admin, MyDB, and local, and you have all of the collections. Uh, so on admin, you don't have any collections. System, you got a tree of them. And of FS, you get a couple. And of course, over here, you can see there are database username and password. And of course, we can check for all kinds of information and we can even clone the entire database if there are a lot of sensitive data. So we're going to return to the main menu and we're going to exit from here and we're going to reset the this, this terminal on Kali Linux and we're going to go back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what Mongo can actually do. And what we're going to do is we can actually go to sudo gedit followed by etc mongodb.configuration, which is conf. Once you hit that, it will ask you for your password. Just go ahead and enter your password for your server. And once you hit that, that will open up MongoDB configuration. And so over here, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So there's a lock path that you do. So if you have a security monitoring tool, you can pump the locks over using syslog. And of course here we have a bind IP. So this bind IP allow us to actually allow remote connection, remote access. And what's really important here is off is currently by default. So there is a no authentication, which is true. And this is off by default, which is why we gain access into the MongoDB through a remote connection so quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to backspace and we're going to allow authentication is equal to true. So this means that we will need an authentication in order to access into MongoDB. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And once I've saved, I'm going to close it and I'm going to restart the MongoDB service. So we're going to go to service followed by MongoDB. And then we enter status, so we see that it's running. And what we can do is we can do a restart. So once you do a restart, it will ask you for your permission. So you just enter your password that you set for the operating system. And once you do that, we have the service restart. So you can again verify that if it has been restarted. So you can do service MongoDB followed by status. So we see that it is already running. So again, if you go back here, all you got to do is go to MMAP followed by the IP address 192.168.1.20, followed by the port number of 27017. So when we scan it again, again, we'll be able to look at the information here. And likewise, we see that the MongoDB database is running. So what we can do is likewise, we can still use the very same technique that we used earlier, which is using the script 
of mongodb dash boot so when we do mongo dash db dash boot when you hit enter straight away it will scan and what you see is that we have found a account so previously you recognize there was no authentication and this time around we found an account which is having a username of test and a password of password so it performs 75 guesses on your behalf and within that period of time we managed to find out a valid credential that you can log in directly and be able to probe the operating system prop the collection, prop the databases, manipulate the database immediately. And this happens very, very frequently because of all the dominant accounts, because of all the default accounts that are created alongside the database or for testing environment. And it allows you to compromise the entire system very quickly. So there you have seen it. When you go through the tutorial, you were able to see how we could very quickly use Nmap as well as NoSQL map to gain direct access into those remote services running on MongoDB. And again, there are many different kinds of defense mechanisms that we can discuss on today. And number one of them I wanna share in today's tutorial is about attack paths, as well as data paths. So when a MongoDB, which is running, usually hosted for applications, how can you restrict the firewall to only allow specific application to access only into that MongoDB? So this kind of firewall rules, this kind of network firewall rules as well, are very critical to how you could actually protect those critical assets within your environment. And at the same time, if you're an attacker, you also want to think about the applications that are accessing into those databases so that you know that if you have an out-of-band access directly from a different IP source, that could actually trigger the security monitoring and you'll be flagged out immediately by the security operation center. So with all of this in mind, I hope you learned something valuable today. And if you like what you have watched, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And thank you so much for watching.